All right, welcome back to part two of vectoring. So uh, for a vectoring, obviously, do not use Photoshop for any logos, like whatsoever. Always, always, always use uh, Adobe Illustrator. So uh, once you get into Adobe Illustrator, create new, uh, name it whatever you want. Tutorial, if I could spell. Lolo, Lolo tutorial. Uh, I usually go 1500 by 1500. Uh, it doesn't really matter since uh, in Illustrator, you can make things as big or as small as you want and it won't lose quality. So create it and go back to Photoshop where your sketches have to uh, press V, and, uh, choose the move tool and drag over your uh, sketch. You can drag it as wherever you want. And drag it to Illustrator. Your Illustrator icon down below. And uh, resize it to your desired size. And you click uh, the square box over here. And it'll lock it. And double click on the layer. This will uh, pop up. Uh, dim images to 50%. Uh, make a new layer. And um, before we start vectoring, um, the pen tool is going to be your best friend. So uh, if you're not very good at the pen tool, I would suggest uh, looking up some pen tool tutorials on YouTube. Sometimes they have like a little downloadable uh, packet. That way you can practice doing curves and stuff. Stuff like that. Because uh, for logos, using the pen tool is everything. So the way I do logos uh, is I usually um, start from the middle when I do symmetry. And uh, start pen tooling. Hold shift. Drag and click. And uh, we'll do one side and mirror it. And before we go on further, make sure you do this first to go to view and uh, uncheck snap to pixel. That way you can uh, have more uh, freedom with the pen tool and it won't snap to invisible layers or invisible, invisible places. It's hard to explain. I just go around the outside of your uh, logo and go right back up to the top. And press I for eye drop tool and uh, select your uh, stroke color and uh, it'll be black or whatever you chose to uh, draw the sketch with and you press V you hold alt and shift and you drag now you want to press O oh press O hold shift and drag and it will um, flip it horizontally and drag it until you see the blue line. Once it snaps, you select the other shape and you uh, use your Pathfinder uh, menu. Click Unite and it'll get rid of that middle line. And if you don't see Pathfinder, you go to Window and Pathfinder and it should pop up. Now we uh, hit A, Direct Select Tool, click your uh, shape. Lower the opacity to 49% or whatever works for you. And uh, now we make the shapes. Uh, also, the way you uh, switch from the stroke to fill is you hold Shift and X. All right, so once you have all your shapes on one side vectored, uh, hit a V and select, uh, and select everything. And uh, press A. And hold shift and click anywhere on the other side. Hit A again. And uh, hold alt and drag. And then shift. Then let go. Then hit O. And hold shift and drag. And that should uh, flip everything. And sometimes you have to zoom in for everything to snap. And sometimes things won't line up. 
So uh, drag everything over and hold click uh, one shape and hold shift. We'll click the other side and pathfind unite. And there we go. Should have a nice clean outlaw. So, all right, so select your stroke and make it a hundred percent. And, uh, next we go to color. So select your cowboy's face or outlaw's face or whatever this is. And, uh, Cool thing you can do is go to swatches and go to this table up here and open swatch library, color books, and Pantone solid color. You can drag it up here. Oh, and drag it down. And you have all these colors to choose from. Let's choose a, a skin color. Use the eye tool, eyedropper tool, eye, and select the color you just used. I guess that'll do. What color should this be? It's just brown, I guess, classic. Maybe a red hat. Maybe a black hat because he's an outlaw. So just scroll the way down here. For his eyes, just something white. Something white. <clears throat> and for his eyes, maybe something white. And. What I just did there was the, it's called shape builder tool. So say if you wanted a shadow here, say you wanted that as a shadow. So once you made your shape, you hit a and hold shift and select the object that it's on. And you keep on holding shift and you press M and see this grid thing comes up. And if you want to take something away, you hold left alt and you click. And there you go. Make this a darker color. Or maybe we should make the hat a little lighter. Make this a different color as well. And there you go. Maybe make his tie red. Undershirt, maybe it could be maybe gray, maybe gray. Or maybe the same color as his hat. Yeah. Looks a little better. And uh we'll give him his five o'clock shadow like he had. I'll make that five o'clock shadow shape. Shift and M, hold left alt, click, and just change this color to maybe that color. Eh, maybe not. Yeah, that'll do. Try and merge these together. Make our shadows. duplicate that and drag it over since it's a uh, since it's a symmetrical logo sometimes it doesn't want to snap so you have to zoom in there which is a Z for zoom by the way 
for these. Maybe we can make them gray. Or maybe red. Yeah, we'll stick with the red. And to make the outline path, or the offset, go to object, path, offset path, and click preview. You can scroll up or down to whatever width you want. I think that's pretty good. A little lighter gray. Maybe red. It goes black. Yeah, it's looking good. Add some shadow on the ear. Remember, not too much detail because say if someone uses your logo, you want them, you want the people to see it clearly. You don't want too much detail. Needs to be visible even when it's tiny. You, can, you have to tell what it is. Do the mustache. Sometimes just double clicking on the color can help too if you want some darker color or a lighter color for the shadows. Because either way, this uh, uh, it's going to be in CMYK. That's another another thing I forgot to mention. Make sure your logos are in CMYK. That's it makes it a lot better for printing for uh, branding. And again, the main reason we use Illustrator for logos is again you can make the logo as big or small as you want, and it won't lose quality. So. Makes it a lot easier for designers to use your logo for like banners and stuff. Make it a little darker. And again, it doesn't have to be all these intricate shapes and stuff. It just, just make it simple. Simple shapes, simple shadows. Doesn't have to be fancy. And there we go. And always make sure you save. Control S. Always control S. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That's how you make a mascot logo. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys want me to do a maybe a font tutorial or text tutorial. To go through mascots but uh yeah i think that's gonna be uh, about it uh let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments um maybe something you're not clear on and i'll uh i'll try my best to answer it but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this series the two-part series it was definitely different for me because uh i don't do these i don't do tutorials so uh yeah thanks for guys for watching and uh yeah see you guys later